Hello everyone! In this tutorial we will take a look at the custom notifications. Ok, so in the main activity layout there is just a simple button that will trigger the notification. In the main activity itself I referenced this button and set the click listener on it. In order to create a notification we must reference some notification related classes. And these include the Notification Builder class, then Notification Manager class. Each notification comes with the unique ID, which is an integer, so we will create a new variable for that ID. Then we will define a Remote View object. Remote View class allows us to build a custom layout and then combine that layout with the notification. And also let's make a reference to the activity itself so that we don't use method get application context all the time. Ok, so first initialize the context and notification manager. Next we create a new remote view object. First parameter is the package name of our application. In order to get it we can use the get package name method. The second parameter is our custom layout XML file. I already created that XML file so let's take a look at it. I have relative layout as a root. As you see I put my layout height to be 112 dp. Layout height can go from 64 dp to 256 dp. Notifications that are 64 dp are considered single line notifications or small notifications, while all other notifications that are larger than 64 are considered as big notifications. Note that the big notifications were introduced in Android 4.1, so any lower Android version can't display these big notifications. Ok, so I put my height to 112 dp, which is considered as a big notification. Views that you can use in the notification are the following one. As you see here I have put an image view a progress bar, a text view and a button. Each view has its own ID which is necessary in order to reference it from the activity. Let's go back. Now let's say we want to change an image of the image view. We can do it by calling the set image view resource method. First parameter is our ID of the image view and the second parameter is the actual image resource. Now let's change our text view content. Just call the set text view text method and do the same. Provide the ID of the text view and then set your custom text. We can also reference the progress bar with the set progress bar method and we can set its max and its current values. Ok, so now we come to the button, which is a little bit tricky. When we want to set the click listener on the button in activity, it is pretty simple. But here we are not in the activity context anymore, so we can't just create a normal click listener. What we can do is to use the broadcast receiver class, which runs in background even though the activity is not active. So basically, when the button is clicked, we use the Broadcast Receiver class to catch the user's action. So, in order to catch that button click, we must provide a unique filter for our Broadcast Receiver so that it knows for which actions to listen for. We can do it by creating a new intent and then we pass the custom action filter string. For me it will be called button clicked. So the broadcast receiver 
will only listen for intents that have an action string named button clicked. Also, we must provide the unique ID of the notification so that the notification be closed when the user responds to the notification. To do that, let's just call the put extra method. And now we need to put the unique ID. Easiest way to generate the random ID is to call the system's current time method and cast it to integer. It will always give unique ID. Now, in order to broadcast this intent, we must use the pending intent class. So call the getBroadcast method and pass in the current context, then request code. It can be any number, so type whatever you want, and also provide a button intent. Finally, we need to bind this pending intent with the actual button click. So call the setOnClick pending intent method and provide the button's ID along with the just created pending intent. Ok, so now we must create this broadcast receiver class in order to listen for the button click. So go to the manifest file and define a new receiver. Give it a name and also an action filter. As I said before, this broadcast receiver is listening for intents that have action filter named button clicked. Now create this new class and extend it with the broadcast receiver. Implement the onReceive method, which gets called whenever receiver receives the intent. First what we're gonna do is to cancel the notification. In other words, to make it disappear after user clicks on the button. Just reference the notification manager with the getSystemService method and then call the cancel method. In order to cancel the notification, we must provide the notification ID. We already attached the unique ID with the intent in the main activity. So to get it here in on a receive method, we just use the get int method from the received intent. And just for testing purposes, let's make a new toast message. Okay, go back to main activity. What is left is to create a new notification and bind our remote view with it. So as usual for any notification create a new intent as well as the pending intent using the getActivity method. This means that if user clicks on a notification anywhere but not on the button, it will launch this activity. If user clicks on the button, then the broadcast receiver will be activated. Create a new notification builder. Don't forget to set the small icon, it is a must. Then call the method setAutoCancel in order to remove the notification when the notification is touched. And now we must bind our remote view with the notification. There are two methods that we can use. If we are building a standard notification which has a height of 64 dp, then we use the set custom content view method. But if you are using greater notification height, then you must call the set custom big content view method. I used height of 112, so that means I will use the big content view method. Then just provide your pending intent. And for the end, to reveal the notification, call the notify method from the notification manager. Provide your unique ID along with the builder instance. Ok, so that's it. Let's do the testing. And here it is. Now let's click on our custom button. And as you see, we are getting a toast message from our broadcast receiver class. That's all from me for now. See you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.